There it is. Dun, 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 dun. When you get your scooter pull, don't forget the decal sheet or decal sheet in the bottom. Okay, people. <laughs> okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. And this week, I am Wednesday Robo. Oh, Wednesday Robo? Allow me to explain. As you watch this on Friday, which is the usual day for the weekly, of course, it always, I try to keep it on a regular schedule. As you're watching this, your version of me is currently working at Branson Comic Con at a booth. And then tomorrow, your yesterday, Thursday Robo will be traveling to Branson Comic Con and then setting up. So, he won't have time to shoot the weekly. If I miss something, it's because, yes, I shot this two days ago. Hopefully that was somewhat coherent in the terms of timeline. I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. The important thing is toy news. That's what I'm here for. That's what you're here for. Let's talk about some toys. PowerCon has announced their Masters of the Universe Classics exclusives for the show. And... They're, they're cool figures, but they're not, you know, needed figures. At least that's how I look at it. I, and that's the kind of exclusives that I like. I can look at them and go, yeah, sure, I could pay for them. Sure, I could get them. Uh, but do I need to get them? Do I need it? And if you're a Masters only collector, sure, you're going to need them. But for somebody like me that collects a bunch of lines, I, it, I, I don't really need Slammerai or, you know, slime-covered He-Man. And that's what the exclusives are. There's a three-pack of Slammerai and uh, two Snake Troopers. I don't know a lot about the history of the line and Masters. I just, I, I just knew the toys that were released back in the day and the original cartoon. But this apparently completes the 1988 concept wave that was unreleased, at least in Classics form. And then there's the Masters of the Universe Classics Collector's Choice Horde Zombie He-Man. This one's a little more tempting because I remember... You know, the commercials where the slime comes down over He-Man. I always wanted a green type version of He-Man. I, I may get this just to, just to have. It's somewhat nostalgic. Plus, I'm kind of a sucker for translucent plastic, even though the line isn't known to, to be very durable when it comes to that kind of plastic. Now, it being exclusive to PowerCon, it's a little bit more expensive. It's a little bit more difficult to get. If you're an attendee to the show, you can pre-order these uh, from uh, March 9th through uh, April 7th. You know, uh, August, April. And then for non-attendees, the pre-orders run from April 8th to May 5th. I'm doing this a lot. I'm, I don't know what this is. And for non-attendees, they're being sold through Big Bad Toy Store and then Space, or S-P-A-C-E in Germany. For attendees, the price of the three-pack will be $165. He-Man will be $55, I believe. Yep, that's right. I, I remembered. For non-attendees, though, the three-pack is $210. He-Man is 70? Did I read that right? Yes. $69.99. $70. Whew. <laughs> also up for pre-order right now is the Masters of the Universe Collector's Choice William Stout Collection. Now like Veebs and I talked about during the Toy Fair Roundup, this is kind of a genius way to get the movie characters into action figure form without actually using the movie rights. They're actually using his designs for the movie, so yeah, it kind of skirting around. That's why He-Man doesn't look exactly like Dolph. It's close, it's passable, especially in this aesthetic that Classics has had for its whole run. He-Man comes with a long sword, a short sword, a dagger. Karg comes with his laser blaster and a much more movie look to his costume, uh, color-wise. Regular Skeletor has the Cosmic Key and Havoc Staff. And then Hyper Skeletor, I've never actually heard him call that. We always just called him the Golden God Skeletor. He comes with a Golden God Havoc Staff. Pre-orders are open right now until March 31st. They're made to order, so whatever we order, that's what they're going to make, and apparently that's it. But to order singles, you have to order a whole set, which is $140, and then singles after that will be $35. And sticking with Super 7 for one minute more, they also have up for pre-order Conan the Barbarian comic book version. Now, I don't claim to be a lawyer. I don't even claim to be intelligent when it comes to this kind of stuff. Most of the time, I'm just like, pretty plastic, give me. So I don't know how the rights worked here where they got the 70s Marvel Comics version of Conan rights. I, I, who cares? It, it, it looks pretty nifty. I'll admit it's not the most exciting version of Conan. In fact, it's a little bit plain. We essentially see the He-Man body with new extremities, new shorts, new belt necklace new head well i'll say heads there's a screaming head 
and then a mean old Conan head. Also includes a sword, a spear, a dagger, and same thing here, $35 made to order. Both this and the William Stout collection will ship sometime in the summer. Big Bad Toy Store has posted a new promotional shot of the McFarlane Toys One Punch Man, and Robo don't know One Punch Man. He knows less about this than he does Dragon Ball, which we'll get to in a minute as always. But it's interesting here because McFarlane Toys is following up on their promise of updating articulation in a lot of their action figures. The prototype they showed at Toy Fair, not a lot of articulation. It was more old school McFarlane Toys, but they did show a picture in the background. Here is an actual figure showing off... Are those... Are those butterfly joints? Ooh. We see the cuts and everything, but it comes down to actually getting it in hand, seeing the range of motion here. But if it's like the Fortnite stuff, yes, because of the design of some of the Fortnite characters, it impeded articulation a little bit. This is essentially just a spandex body, not a lot of muscle tone. I, I, I want to kind of see what goes on here. $20, which is, again, something that McFarlane Toys said at Toy Fair. They want to keep the price point for this, their other game lines, their Fortnite stuff, and then eventually the DC and Harry Potter down to about this price point, $20 to $25. And this releases in May. The Hasbro Transformers Siege, Starscream, and Soundwave have been popping up in Walmarts in I Iowa, Georgia, Texas, a couple other places. So, well, if it hits like Ultra Magnus and Shockwave, it won't be anywhere around in my area. I've seen those once. It was up in Kansas City, and that I, I'm still on the fence here, even though Hasbro, those devious bastards, put Optimus Prime in my goodie bag at Toy Fair. I, I pulled him out, and I was like, how'd, how'd you know? What? Well, Optimus is cool, but I haven't leapt off that ledge yet. But man, my boy Soundwave, and then Jetfire, this, this whole line looks kick-ass. The Hasbro Pulse Instagram is doing a fan poll right now uh, asking who we want to see in the Star Wars Black Series for the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back next year. You don't know how many times I've tried to say that sentence in the past 10 minutes. The 10 they've chosen here uh, came from other polls on fan sites last week, and here's the 10 winners of those. Now we choose one. Number one is Lobot. Number two is 2-1-B. Number three is Hoth Rebel Soldier. Number four is Wilro Hood. Number five, Wedge Antilles. Number six, Bespin Leia. Number seven, Dagobah Luke. Number eight, Ugnaught. Number nine, Imperial Probe Droid. And number 10, FX-7 Medical Droid. And now it comes down to this, where everybody's going to have their own opinion on this. There's nothing wrong with that. You may like a character more than this guy, or this gal, or her, or him, or them, or this kid, or that kid. Everybody's going to have a different choice here. Me, personally, I chose Lobot. I have Lando on the shelf. I need Lobot to go with him. But when it comes down to it, I'll take all ten. I, I don't care which one wins. I'll buy them all and then multiples of half of them. And since this is going up on Friday, the last day of the poll is today. So get your ass over there and vote. And speaking of Star Wars Black Series, I ran across an interesting Instagram account this last week from... And I'm sorry if I butcher your name, dude. I, I love you. But here we go. At Shaolong Tin. I'm sorry, I really am. I have trouble with most English words. He's a sculptor for Hasbro, and he's shown some of the raw sculpts of the Black Series figures, and I love this. This shows the sculpt underneath the paint. A lot of these, well, some of these are from before Photo Real. It's a shame that some of this was covered up with factory paint. Like Lando, I'm hoping we get a redo for the 40th anniversary of this figure. Put some photo reel on there, give us the real Lando that's underneath the paint. Same for Baze, he needs a photo reel, but I, I really, really doubt they're gonna go back to any of the Rogue One characters. And if it came down to it between a photo reel Baze and an actual Bodhi, I, I, I need Bodhi to finish off that team first. Beckett, if I remember right, was after Photo Reel. Same for Dryden Voss. I'll be taking a look at him here in the next couple weeks. Also along with the Mud Trooper and then Mace Windu. This, <laughs> this is one I'm excited about opening up because I want to compare to the mean looking SH figure arts. I see who wins in that category. But like I said, I just love this grayscale stuff. It shows the actual work that was put into the figure before the factory. Not that they were shitty figures coming out of the factory, it's just this gives us a glance behind the curtain. Now just tonight, remember Wednesday night, so uh, I'm a little bit behind here, Bandai's Instamashi Instagram account has revealed the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Super Zamasu. Robo's not that far into the Dragon Ball series, he needs to get past the Cell Saga 
but it's a cool looking figure. Now, no details on what actually comes with the figure. I, 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 I suspect it'll be some hands, maybe an alternate face. The effect that is behind him in this picture is pretty, it's pretty cool. And there better be more stuff for the MSRP of $83 that they're asking, which I figure would be about 70, 75 by the time it does actually come out. And it's coming in August. And finally, uh, you may have forgotten the Foosh was involved in our own action figure line called Articulated Icons. Uh, ninjas, samurai, martial artists. We're kind of working on more colorways, uh, brainstorming that just to kind of refresh the ninjas a little bit. And I have been given the go ahead to reveal that there will be a green ninja coming very soon. We'll have four refresh ninjas in all. As of this moment, it's just the green and we'll work on more reveals as time comes and as we're working on it. So that's it from Wednesday Robo to Friday y'all. Uh, if you're at Branson Comic Con, go by and see Friday Robo. He's just, you know, selling stuff, working a booth, wandering around, looking at toys, looking at comic books, looking to say hi to people. And then next Friday, we'll catch up on all the stuff that maybe happens at the end of this week, stuff happens the next week. It's just more fuel for the fire. It's more toy talk. It's more excitement of stuff coming. But as far as this week goes, if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Tripping over boxes. And I'll catch you on the foosh. <laughs>